When hunting for my favorite levels of liquidity, I know this is something that is, will have a great impact on my trading for that day slash week going forward. For those of you who do not know what a swing failure pattern is, I'll go over that now. But what I'm going to be discussing mainly is which levels are the best for looking at swing failure patterns, you know, because there's so many different highs and lows. How do you kind of justify which ones you want to be taking trades off of? And that's what I'm going to be going through this video, because I have a relatively systematic way in which I'm looking at my favorite levels to be trading liquidity and SFP patterns from. A swing failure pattern is probably the most simplest setup that you end up seeing within trading, to be honest. And if we just show you a quick example of it here, it's where you have an initial high or low on the chart. And essentially, you then see a wick above that high. So in this case, this white level here, you can see is wicked above. And that the price, essentially, that candle specifically closes directly below that level. It's kind of like a swing failure pattern shows us excess towards the high. But I'll be going deeper into this. This is just the very core basic fundamentals of a swing failure pattern for you. And this applies on many different time frames from the weekly, the monthly, the daily, the four hour, the hourly, the 30 minute, the 15, all, all, every different time, this swing failure pattern it is very, very prominent on. And I'm going to be talking through different time frames that you can be using as well as like the levels in which you want to be using them on. So yeah, we'll, we'll dive into that a bit more now. One of the most important things I want to note when discussing swing failure patterns is actually the time spent between a high being put in or a low being put in and then that low or high being tested again. Now, let me show you a bit of an example of what I mean by a bit of a opposite example to this, which is like a bad example to a swing failure pattern is if you see it, you know, price is trending and then you just see swing failure pattern after swing failure pattern after swing failure pattern. Swing failure patterns, the reason they work is because they're generated off of people getting trapped, stops being hit uh, before forming a larger reversal. But if you're putting in an initial high, for example, and then you're just spending like a minute below it and then you're testing it again for a swing failure pattern, there's not enough people to potentially be generating stops, new positions above this, essentially this high for it then to warrant a bigger reversal. So when you're looking for specific highs or lows to be tested, for example, what you don't want to be seeing is them being tested very quickly. You want to be seeing maybe the high being put in, maybe a bit of a range, you know, an hour, two, three hours, then testing it again. People within this sort of segment of the chart they'll be potentially placing their stops above this high. People will be potentially trading the breakout a bit more at that point. And then you can see for a larger reversal, you know, if we see this and then back down, rather than also just almost just seeing like price trending in a certain direction, whether that be up, SFP, 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 and then getting stopped out or dropping down, you know, you want to be seeing high time spent below, generate the liquidity above, take the high and then see a reversal So the time spent between the high or the low being put on the chart is also really quite significant in my opinion in order to generate those stops being hit now just bringing it back to that point in relation to seeing a high or low being tested after a bit of time being spent so let's just say you've got the high put in here you then spent some time below it now what i'm interested in for example is when you see price action as such is rather than you know you've put the high in what's going on after this high because for example, if within exo charts, you can see that in this segment specifically, you've got a ton of new shorts opening. So new shorts, even though you haven't seen any sign of weakness by taking out any sort of market structure. So people predominantly prematurely shorting that then goes to my mind. Well, this initial high right, has got some weight on it. If we see an SFP of this high it would be a really decent scenario because what would that do? Well, anyone who's prematurely shorting would most likely get stopped out because you're thinking that people who are shorting early, they're placing their stop above this high. You then see a decrease in open interest coming above this high and then that triggers a short trade. And, you know, I place extra confidence on this trade because I know that there was people prematurely shorting from beforehand, placing their stops above, and then you can get to see a decent reaction from that point onward. So that is something to keep in mind. What is the characteristic, right? And this works in reverse. So if we just delete this. It literally works the exact same reverse. You come down, you put in an initial low, you spend some time beneath that or just above that low, right? And then what's the characteristic of this going on here? Is there new longs opening? If there's a ton of new longs opening here, well, you look for either, there's two options again, same with the high being put in first, is that you either look for essentially a swing failure pattern, which gives a really decent setup with a decrease in open interest, even potentially some trap shorts down there. But again, this doesn't need to be new positions. It can just be people getting stopped out and wrecked from prematurely longing. Or if there's no swing failure pattern, this can just continue heading down and wreck these people who have longed here so early. So don't just be thinking about the SFP in this case in terms of liquidity, but also be thinking about the characteristics above or below that liquidity to be thinking about what's going to happen at that certain level. Okay, hopefully that makes sense in terms of identifying that. I'll go over to exo charts very briefly now before we actually go into certain series of liquidities being taken and diving much deeper into that. So if you want to know how to actually decipher if you're going to be seeing 
new positions or positions closing and just that characteristic between a low being put in. I've just come up with a quick example here, um, but using ExoCharts desktop, okay, just maximize this one here. On the left-hand side, you can see the dynamic profile tool here. Dynamic profile, I've got it set to D on my hotkeys. Um, but if I go over to here, hit the button here and then basically just pull it. So we're looking at, this is our initial low and then what's going on since it's been tested. So I'm tasting it from after that low has been put in, basically towards, you know, we can be taking it in time, but essentially the two figures you're gonna be looking at. What's CVD doing? Is it in any form of positive delta essentially? Yes, it's positive, it's 1.5 million positive. And open interest, is that positive? Yes. So don't, I think people over complicate this a lot. You know, just look at these two numbers and go, it, there's only four things it can be. It can be over new longs, short uh, longs closing new shorts shorts closing it can only be those those four things and in this case it's new longs opening because you've seen cvd positive with open interest positive if you see any form of positive open interest it simply tells you that these are new positions opening in one direction or the other and the cvd simply in this in this case will tell us that it's new longs opening so within that new longs opening we can anticipate okay an sfp with decrease in open interest you then see a decrease in open interest upon that low being taken and it gives you actually confidence to take the trade, obviously with many other factors, but I thought I'd just touch upon that in terms of when you're hunting for liquidity to know, actually anticipate what can happen at that low based upon what's happened prior to that low being tested or high being tested. So that's how you look at it again, dynamic profile tool, CVD, open interest. That's how I look at it at least. I'm sure there's many other ways, but this is how I look at it within ExoCharts desktop. Let's move back over to trading view and then I'm going to go over essentially looking for series of stops being hit, daily highs and lows, and talking about that in much more detail. So heading back to trading view now, what is another really good point in which I like to look for liquidity? And that's when series of stops are hit. So how do we kind of decipher this information? When is do, When do I classify series of stops hit? And I've kind of built, I mean, they're not built. I mean, it's, I'm sure it was out there in many other formats before, um, but there's an indicator and it's basically called liquidity. I've got it just personally done. Uh, pivot line breaks, I'll link in the description, completely free of charge, nothing like that. Just add it to your chart. And basically what's going to show is pivot highs and lows. So from fractals, it's creating extended pivots. Okay, and from this, you can actually see where there's gaps in liquidity. So for example, I like on the one hour chart, even the hourly and the 15 minute are my favorite for interest, for those of you who are, who are wondering. And essentially what we're looking for are these gaps in liquidity. So very, very quickly up here, because there's a gap in liquidity. Now, especially the best ones are where you see like multiple stops here that are really quite close together. And then you'll see essentially a gap after that. Now, this, what I like to then see at that point is the last one being hit and taking all three stops of liquidity. Again, these could be three different sets of players who are placing stops above each individual level just to be run up essentially, stopped out, and then you'd see a bigger retracement off of that one. Okay, so this is just a very brief example of that. I'm gonna dive into many more examples. So let's get into that now. So going into this one here, this is another great example where you can see there's tons, this isn't an hourly chart. This is a really, really nice one to be honest where you can see, look at this, the amount of stops there are. And this is something which is very, very, again, discretionary. There's no systematic way of going, I want to see five lines of liquidity built up before a stop is hit or whatever. I'm just looking mainly for the gaps and mainly for series of stops being hit before a gap in PA uh, price action. So in this scenario, you can see one, two, you know, there's quite a few here lining up before this massive gap here comes into play. This is the gap. So this is the high of interest for me. My favorite high would be this one here. And I'm saying to myself, okay, an SFP of, you know, rather than putting a, a whole massive box there, I'll simply go this high here is the one I'm interested in. Okay, put this as high. And this is the high I'm interested in, 30,605, because after this level has been hit, you've taken a ton of liquidity beneath you, and then there's not much above you into a massive gap. So if you're wrong on the idea that this swing failure pattern, so this is the idea I like to trade it from, is if there's a swing failure pattern, well, then I'd say to myself, okay, that is a potential trade setup. But if we reclaim into this gap here, the likelihood is you're actually coming up to the next swing high level. So that's the way I like to trade these. Again, on the higher time frame, lower time frame, and I mark these out consistently on the hourly, 15 minute is part of my morning check, to be honest with you. So if we just look at my liquidity levels, okay, you can see here, this was one that I, I got tested out there. Uh, and then we've got, yeah, I still got that one marked out 30,605. You can see here, the amount I've got marked out is quite a few. I can remove this one now because it's been tested. Okay, this one here got tested in the end uh, perfectly. But aside from that, you can see how I'm coming up with these liquidity levels now. You can understand it a bit more detail. And look at this one here. There's a massive, you don't even need the liquidity indicator on there at the moment indicator i'm just it's just looking for fractals and pivots and breaking it up in that fashion but you can see here this is a low and then beneath this low there's a massive gap in price action so looking at 23.856 this is a decent level to potentially be looking for a potential swing failure pattern at 
um, or reaction. And this is how I'm, I just set alerts at these levels. And then I go into my exo charts routine of looking, okay, what's going on there? And then deciphering whether I'm gonna pull the trigger or not on that specific trade. The next method in terms of looking for liquidity to be taken, again, is a very similar fashion, but it's done on a different time frame to speak. It's not the exact same thing because we're not looking at fractals and levels in that sense being hit. We're looking at untested lows. So what I mean by that is, and this, this is a perfect scenario, and it came to my mind to actually make this video because of what we saw in the past week, is essentially look at this. So you've got this daily low here, Monday, the 1st of May, 2023. Okay, let's just mark this out and go through it together. If we just mark this out. Okay, you can, this low isn't tested. Let's just hide this. You then got another one. Okay, not tested. Another one, completely untested. Another one, completely untested. At the time, of course. And then you've got this one here, which is completely untested. Well, it was untested, right? And the thought process is, is that people within first so from the 1st of may to friday the whole week people could have literally been just trailing their stops below these lows trailing their stops below these lows and then once they're finally taken you know because you're not taking you know you're not taking any liquidity you're leaving them off too easy so what i like to see is essentially those daily lows being taken and previous day low being taken essentially before seeing a move up in price so in this case you've actually cleaned up you know you let you've took taken all these people out who have been trailing their stops and now potentially you could see a reversal of course but the idea is to be looking at daily highs and lows okay you know as well as looking at the fractals and the pivots and liquidity in that fashion as well so hopefully this made sense you know when you're seeing these pivots basically or the daily lows or daily highs just trailing down the similar fashion here to be honest i mean it's not bad in this one uh, but one, two, three coming down straight away. You potentially expect this to be taken, but there's so many other variables that come into this. I, I won't dive into that too much because it requires a learning of exo charts in a bit more detail, which will be coming later. But here, this is a perfect example of that where you're seeing like stocks just being potentially trailing and then to wipe them out in one bigger move before potentially seeing a bit of a bounce. So hopefully this made sense looking at these daily highs and lows, okay? You know, makes sense to me. Again, here, if we're just looking here, my, my eyes are instantly drawn to one, two, three, three stops being built there then being taken out in, in, in a very quick fashion. And this doesn't have to result in a swing failure pattern. This can just be resulting in a directional bias. You know, when I saw this, I was saying on Twitter, uh, I'm literally looking for these five stops, six stops to be taken out, you know, at least to be taken out to then clean this up and take anyone who's been trading their stop out of the market. So it doesn't mean that we're going to actually see a reversal off of this low, essentially, but it meant, you know, from up here, I could tell, tell signs. I could potentially anticipate price reversing from the top all the way back down to clean up all these final stops here. So hopefully that made a bit of sense in that fashion. And I'll dive onto the final thing now. So the final one is actually in relation to exo charts. I mean, I discussed this within my forming a bias video. Okay. And what that is, is essentially looking for poor highs and poor lows. Okay. So if we head over to exo charts and head over to the TPO, daily TPO section, I'll just briefly touch upon this because if you want, go watch that video, which will be linked in the description or whatever. Um, in terms of YouTube videos, but essentially poor highs and poor lows. So a poor high on a TPO, I'll very quickly brush up on this. TPO charts based upon time, uh, each block is is part of time essentially. I won't dive into it too much instead of volume. But when you see two blocks at the high, again, I've go over the exact stats and within this, within that video, but at the very hardest TPO profile, you can see there's two blocks rather than one. This is a poor high. Again, if you see this at the low of a profile, I believe we just go back a bit in time. Again, low, two blocks on the profile. Typically you'll see one blocks. That is not a poor low, that is not a poor high. This is a poor low. And again, if we just go back, that is a poor high. So you can see there, that is again, other levels I'll be interested in and actually go through within my morning routine. But yeah, poor high, poor lows. Again, these are also levels I'm interested in in terms of looking for liquidity and potential resting liquidity below or above these levels. So going over time frames quickly, I'm talking, I use like to use the four hour, the hourly, the 15 minute and the five minute. Uh, that is really it, four hour, hourly, 15 minute, five minute. Again, obviously you've got the daily, potentially you can be using and weekly, but those ones are the more intraday medium time frames that you're gonna be using. Again, kind of four I stick to, and you know, again, do your back testing and research, but that's what I do my, my kind of analysis and swing failure patterns from is those specific time frames. okay? So I don't go to like the, I used to use the three minute, I switched that to the five minute off of some further stats and back testing in that sense. But yes, the four hour, hourly, 15 minute, five minute are the ones I'm using and daily, weekly on the occasion as well. Again, I hope this video made sense. Please check out my Twitter at Luxury with an extra while in the end for more information and free intraday updates and stuff that I'm doing in relation to exo charts. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you later. Thank you.